Hello, hello, neighbors. Thank you for dropping by to the channel. As you can see, it's a wet one. I'm going to attempt to do some type of GH review today. With one of my fur balls on my lap right now. So, let's get to today's GH review. And I just want to say first, yay, Andre is back. Andre effing freaking Maddox. Is finally back. Yes, yes, by time. I said the whole time, as soon as Drew came back, how come we ain't see Andre? How come Andre ain't saying nothing about the memories? Nothing. Yeah, yeah, he was just gone. And I'm going to be probably jumping all over the place, but I'm going to try to get in order. So today, we got Holly in Anna's hospital room. They are still talking shop. And, you know, they, they're discussing what type of man uh, Victor is. And then they get a knock at the door. And then when Holly got up to go answer it, it was Andre. Andre looked good, by the way. Um, I don't remember him looking that good before. But, yeah. When Holly opened the door, Andre was like, Anna Devane, what have you have gotten yourself into now? <laughs> Gave that little sparkling smile and entered the room. So he was uh, letting Holly know that, yes, Anna had called him in for a favor. Um, that he, first of all, I didn't even know that he was on the case of, of the victor in the cast line. And um, like when he was doing the business of that whole memory map and stuff like that, he was he had access to some other files that the WSB had. And, you know, Andre, he went and downloaded that. And so he brought that, those files to Anna to look through to see what Victor plan is. And Holly was the one who um, caught the weapon that they're looking for. So now they know that it is a weapon that's going to release a virus that's going to kill 80% of the population, people. I feel like covid and his cousins already did that or is working his way I, I'm just saying we getting real close to home right GH mm. so as those three are in Anna's hospital room talking about what they found and all that um, Jordan finally comes knocking at Anna's hospital door can somebody tell me why again they left poor Jordan out the damn loop? She cussed y'all behind out thoroughly. Each and every last one of y'all for leaving her out the loop of the first business. I could have sworn Anna said that she wasn't going to leave her out the loop ever again. Now y'all done came up with this plan and, and nobody stopped and said, hey, by the way, leave Jordan a note. This time, letting her know something. I don't know something. Maybe not put Curtis' name in it because she always chewing him out. Probably okay, cool. But maybe leave. I don't. I don't know. Hey, listen, we gonna go check out uh, contact. We gonna check out a lead, and I don't care if they gave it gave her the wrong lead. Just let her know that you. Four Stooges ran off to go handle something. But it didn't take her too long to put clues together once she entered the hospital room of Anna, which, great. But, first of all, General, General Hospital. Oh, Lord. The way y'all write this character, Jordan, she's been dippy in the worst commissioner of all three chicks who played her i don't care from the chick who started her from the chick who took over and then this chick 
Y'all write them dippy. She enters the room. She gets the load down. She's like, okay, since Valentine is not here, all of a sudden Andre here. He been missing for years. And then we got Holly sitting here. Mm, I'm the fact that I can't get in touch with Laura, Curtis, or Drew. That means those four is off together on some kind of rescue mission that I asked them not to do. But yet they out there doing it. So I need you to give me the loca location of where they are. And I like, um, yeah, um, Valentine do have an off something phone, but um, you know, it's a uh, it's a touch and go. Sometimes it's in and out. She's like, well, give me the number. So Holly, <laughs> Holly, like, oh, why? So that you could call them and and what she say, call the guards on them or something. <laughs> before they could get the job done and she's like uh yes so no she said why so you could give them your best best wishes or something like that and she was going to get to call this mission off so anna was like um jordan can we at least let them try to bring the hostages back um and 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 you know and see if we can end it this way and then let the authorities run in there and do whatever they have to do Jordan is like, first of all, these four people was missing, and I could have sworn I asked y'all, stop leaving me out the loop. You know what Anna going to say? Oh, yeah, my bad. I'm a, you, I, what? My bad? That's what y'all, that's the clever comeback they got Anna to come back with. Oh, yeah, my bad. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Jordan is literally the last one to know what's going on. And the fact that Laura left and she's the mayor, you couldn't have the cojones to say, Hey, yo, Jordan, I'm going ahead with my own team. I'll hit you when I find something. Something? Anything? No? Okay. Uh, anyway, let's get off of them. So we got, uh, Curtis, Drew, Laura, and Valentine got to the island. And, of course, we got Curtis got to do this big old speech. Let's make the plan crystal clear. We are here to rescue the hostage, and that is it. Let the authorities handle Victor. Ninja, if you go sit down somewhere to talk about a headed slave and so um no Valentine came on a mission. You understand me? Valentine and Anna know what mission Valentine is on. Now however the other three of you could go ahead and rescue the hostages. But somebody gotta go take care of that damn daddy. Thank you. So let's get to a cool part, like ducks. You low down there. I can't wait for all y'all get busted. I can't wait for you to get busted. I can't wait for Michael get busted. I just, I just can't wait. The joy, the happy, happy joy, joy. So we got Brick back. Hey, Brick. I just love the way, uh, um, um, Brick plays around with Dex emotion. We got Dex standing in, I uh, guess, the warehouse because guess what, y'all? Finally about to do the pipe line deal, meeting thing, or whatever's going on. Um, So he's standing in some random, I guess, the warehouse part, and he has a mini uh, camera in his hand, and he's about, he's looking to see where to place it. And as he's doing that, then we got Brick just walking in through the door right behind him. And he says something like, yeah, I finally caught you, a uh, kid, or something like that. You know, Dex looking like he bought the is on himself, you know. And uh, he slowly turned around and see Brick. And he was like, oh, Brick, I wasn't expecting you. And he was like, yeah, he's like, you know, with Sonny out of commission right now, back and forth with this and that and third. Um, we going to... You know, I'm going to be here for her to have his back or whatnot um, to make sure everything goes down. And so then he, Brick, started asking Dex to run him through what happened, you know, with the shootout all over again. And, 
try to tell him details that he don't know. So he's telling him, uh, you know, once I saw him through the corner of the eye and got um, bossed down, uh, the the sniper kept uh, shooting at us over and over and over until he got a better hit. So Brick was cluing it all together. He's like, all right, so most definitely an ex-military op. A ghost. Untraceable ghost. That has all the funds to pay for this type of service. Mm hmm. Dex standing there looking mighty nervous. And I'm thinking, well, damn, is there really somebody after Sunny? Or did, or is this all like, I don't know, it, it can't be Michael plan. Is this Dex plan to make something go happen for trust or something? Because if not, if not, they just named another military ghost, guys. So, we got somebody about to come up in here and, and cause uh, some good havoc for uh, ducks here. And maybe even Drew, we could get him out of the other trouble. <clears throat> but, um, most definitely another military guy is about to come up on the scene. How we we switching from mob world worlds? Wars to military wars. Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. So as Brick is talking to Dex, Sonny called Brick for a favor to help along Carly and Drew. So he took that phone call. As he's taking that phone call, Dex, however, is in the background with his slick self. Um propping up the camera, the little mini camera, so he could make sure to record everything and have everything, you know, on video for this whole pipe plan thing. So, Brick didn't see that. No other guards saw that. I guess everybody just like, mm -hmm. Um, Brick turned around after he got off the phone, said, I gotta go. I gotta go handle something for Sonny. Uh, you good here? And Dex said, yep. And he was like, all right. And <laughs> Brick left slowly, giving him that Dex that creepy look like I'm watching you, Ninja. I'm watching you. And then he left. Now, um, we got Carly and Diane at the PC. We got Dante and Josh out there. And we got the SEC people guys in there, and they telling. Diane, they got the picture of Carly and Drew hugging in the hallway. Now, Carly, if she can remember, because if Drew was standing right there and he saw that picture, or or, or I should say, once he sees that picture, he's gonna know that was uh that was most definitely Nina because she was the one who was there that time. Okay, but if Carly can remember, stop for a second and remember. How the heck they get a picture of us in that angle in the hospital? Oh, yeah. Remember that time when Drew was saying? Yeah, Carly. You need to listen more. You really do. So, as Diane uh, told the feds, uh, people, I said the feds, I'm so used to saying the feds, the FCC that, uh, you know, there are family members. They just got the bad news about um, her daughter-in-law, and, um, they was comforting each other. There's nothing against the law for that. So they was like, yeah, but she made, like, a six-figure, uh, purchase between ELQ and Medium Roar, and we just, we're just really looking for Drew, is what they're saying. Just give us Drew, and we can let you go. <laughs> of course, Carly was like, you can kiss and go to Thank you. So, um, Diane was like, well, you heard my client. <laughs> and then, uh, the FCC, they had to go and call their boss, I guess. And, um, they were prepared to hold Carly there for 24 hours. So, they stepped out the room for a minute. Carly updated Josh and Dante. And, um, Sonny was right there so when Carly was like I don't understand how they could find out um 
how they found out? I didn't tell anyone. And she looks at Sonny, did you tell anyone? And he was like, only people know is Ned and Olivia, and they won't say a word. Sonny, you 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 forgot about Nina? Yeah, you want you didn't want to throw Nina name in there? No. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. So that's what he said to her. Um, she was like, well, they're looking for Drew, and Drew can't, um, they can't find Drew. So Sonny said, why? She was like, um, because he's out there with Laura and them trying to find Liesl and bring him home and something, something, something. And she was like, well, what if the cops go and get in, in Drew's way? So Sonny gave her a look, and he's like, I'll be right back. That's when he called Britt. Britt. And told him for asked him for the favor. So Britt must have contacted the FCC somehow and gave them a lead on Drew saying that he had just got off the plane in Maui. <laughs> I don't know who they about to run up on, but it ain't Drew. Um, so when they heard that and they came, the FCC came to uh, let Carly and Diane know, okay, your client could go. Diane said why and they was like because we got a tip that um, that Drew Kane had just stepped off the plane in Miami so when they walked off Diane was like oh okay let's go sign the paperwork and all that good stuff Carly turned around to Josh and said I don't st- understand what's going on why do they think that Drew stepped off the plane at Maui and then they turned both of them going to turn around and Sonny going is like standing right there in the corner smile like with a head bump like yep right here so um i don't know carly gave him this kind of off look like what you think he gonna do whatever he can do to help you now mind you before sonny got to the prince he was still at the house and he was asking michael if he knew uh what this thing is about or who turned him in or whatnot and he said he didn't know so willow was saying to him oh maybe you gotta go to the precinct to help your mom and he was like i don't want to leave you so sonny was like y'all stay here when he's like y'all stay here um enjoy the rest of your wedding night i'm gonna go to the precinct and check on your mother and your sister Michael looked up like he had just put a handful of sour lemons in his mouth, looked around, rolled it a little bit, and then said, then didn't even say okay, just shook his head, yeah, okay, mm-hmm, uh-huh. yeah, you can't do nothing, and you're so mad at yourself right now because you let this whole shebang go on for so long. And Sonny has really been trying on all kinds of angles. Mind you, mind you, Sonny is the one, the original one who said, when Michael wants my forgiveness, he's going to have to beg. Well, that's not even Sonny now. He don't care. He'll take an inch, take a mile. He'll take whatever it is Michael give him. He just wants his family back. But Michael is too much in his rage. And he don't understand that he went too far. Now, y'all all the way here. Look, the pipe deal day is here. Your wedding day is here. Your mom's and Drew's now in trouble with the FCC. Um, we got the Victor thing, the, the hostage going on. Like, sir, you couldn't have picked the most unrealistic time to look for revenge on Sonny. Because I got a feeling that they going to get something something's gonna happen to someone and it's going to be in line due to michael's revenge that's all that's all i know so uh we do i did want to mention scott showed up at the hospital to talk to porsche to keep her company since both of them is pretty much in the same boat waiting for their loved ones to return from victor cast and iron hands and a few things he mentioned that uh, was like eye popping. First of all, he said, Portia said, What is with these Cassidines? And Scott said, Because Luke beat them in 81, 1981. And they some sore losers and they've been trying to get back ever since. Now, um, 
that's one and then two he was like going on about the loop this and it's this net dispensers versus the cassadines and he made both of them sound evil and whoever is in their circles or in the way would just be collateral damage he said them damn spencers and cassadines really <laughs> excuse me sir how about the bald ones Y'all did some snacksy stuff. And not to mention, you've been in love with a few of them Spencers. Nor was your first wife. <sighs> Anywho, y'all like to bring Scott out every once in a while, but y'all won't bring Monica out there attic for nothing. And just to mention, Scott and them, them glasses is irking me. And he also looked like he's just getting too old for this. So, y'all know how I love my characters and all. But if Scott ever want to go and retire, go ahead. <clears throat> Back at the quarter mains, though, once Willow went upstairs to get comfy and change and Sunny left, of course, big old mouth Michael turned exactly around to Ned because Ned was standing there the whole time and he had this whole confused look on his face like, what the hell happened? Who called SCC on people? Look, 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 what happened? So, Michael turned around and said, you know exactly what happened. You knew exactly uh, this was going to go down. Because this is what you've been wanting it. Wanted. Ever since just to take the ELQs back together. So, now was like, uh, no, 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 no. And he was like, be real careful, Michael. Now, you're going to say some stuff that you can't take back and... And don't understand, and this and that and third, I ain't had nothing to do with this. And Michael was talking about, oh, yeah, sure, you've been plotting and planning and disgusting, and this is what you would do. You knock anybody out the way just to get back into EOQ power. As they say in that, so they, you know, pretty much are. Olivia don't come walking up. No. Instead, is good old Willow and Brooklyn. And Brooklyn starts yelling, all right, that's enough. And Ned turned around. It's like, exactly, Brooklyn. This is enough. And then Ned walks out. So now, see, Michael, Ned wasn't the one who spilled the beans. But because you also don't know how to control your mouth and thoughts. So you about to get... He about to get it in all kinds of angles, bro. Somebody better make Michael some humble pie. Because he going to need a big slice. Shit. The whole pie. Also, I wanted to mention that Scott bringing up Luke. Maybe we still can get some hope of seeing Luke soon. Because he put it all together. The Holly there. Uh, Anna, Valentine, this and that and third. He said, got something to do with Luke's stuff. They trying to they trying to do something I know they know everything so I just wanted to mention that in case Luke do finally pop up or a phone call something but yay Andre's back maybe we could get Andre and Jordan together she looked a hell of a surprise when she saw that smile and he do look hell of a good anyway um like I said it's pretty wet out here today. I've been stuck in this car ever since. So, if I left anything out for today's episode, please comment below. And I'll see you guys later in the chat. Enjoy your, well, it's not sunny, rainy day. Rainy Friday evening. Goodbye.